1 Samuel 17, verse number 1. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shoko, which belonged to Judah, and pitched between Shoko and Azekah and Ephes Damon. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. He was about nine feet three inches tall. It goes on to say this. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass, about 150 pounds. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders, and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and he cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I of Philistines and ye the servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Well, we're thankful for the goodness of God. We're thankful we can assemble ourselves on this Sunday morning in the Lord's house despite of all the opposition of sickness and opposition of the world and the flesh and the devil, we can still come in under the umbrella of grace and praise the dear Lamb of God and sing songs unto Him and worship Him and pour out our hearts to Him. And God, we can come and Lord, we can find peace and strength and help in time of need. Now, God, we thank you for these that are here this morning. We do pray for those that are sick. And, Lord, we miss them. Those that are traveling, you'd be with them. Lord, what an extra special blessing that Miss May got to come today. And, Lord, uh, that just helps us and blesses us. Thank you for that sweet blessing. Help that dear saint of God. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes we'd find the Word of God real. And God, I pray that, Lord, it would uh, certainly do a work in our hearts. And God, I pray that the sweet Holy Ghost of God would not be quenched or grieved, but allowed to do His office work. God, I pray that You'd put a hedge about us, and I pray You'd bind the powers of hell. And God, You'd speak to our stony hearts. And God, I pray You'd send revival. Lord, I thank You for all the work that's been done around the house of God. Thank You for the work that's been done on that uh, brush harbor and thank you for the work that's been done on the grounds and thank you for the work that's been done in cleaning the house of God and God thank you for uh, those that have labored in prayer and those that came out Friday night and prayed and God thank you Lord for those that have sought your face and those that are hungering for you and God what a blessing to be able to come into a place where folks have come that are like minded come with a desire to uh, uplift the Lord Jesus Christ and exalt His holy name. Now, Father, I pray if there's anyone in our midst today that's a stranger to the grace of God, I pray the Holy Ghost would convict them of sin and God, we'd see them get saved. I pray for those that may be here and saved, but their, their lips, they honor you, but their heart is far from you. I pray today, you'd, through the same sweet Holy Ghost, you'd convict them, help them to come to themselves and then get right with the Lord. I pray for the choicest saints of God. You'd bless them and help them, sustain them, encourage them. And Lord, I pray you'd do a work in our hearts. Bless now. Get glory to your glorious name. Use this unworthy vessel, and we'll thank you and praise you for it. Help us now, Lord Jesus, for it's in your wonderful name we pray. Amen. 
Amen. I want to show you a couple things that the Lord showed me. I want you to notice, first of all, we have a conflict. In verse number 1, we find the Philistines have gathered their armies to battle against Israel. And I don't know about you, but any time there's a war, there's a battle, it's not good. There are going to be lives lost. There's going to be uh, lines drawn in the sand. There's going to be some that get help and get uh, they prevail. And there's going to be great loss regardless. But there is a conflict here. Can I say, my dear friends, every day you draw breath, there's conflict. There's conflict in this world. We have the, the goodness of Almighty God that is willing to save. It's His will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, and through uh, uh, the Lord's church, and through uh, 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 preaching the gospel, and through sending missionaries, uh, and through ministries of the Lord, uh, uh, God is always seeking to bring man to Himself. But there's much opposition. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, walketh about, seeking him whom he may devour. Uh, just as the Lord's trying to do a work to bring man unto himself, uh, uh, the devil's hard at work uh, trying to damn the souls of man and keep man from getting to God. Uh, Amen. I've got good news, Brother James. I've read the back of the book. We win. Hallelujah. Huh? Amen. But there's some that's going to lose, Brother Aaron. They're going to lose in this life, and then unfortunately they're going to spend eternity in the devil's hell paying for their own sins because they wouldn't let Jesus pay for their sins. There is a conflict. Can I say for the child of God there's a conflict? What a blessing. We're saved. We're on our way to heaven. But we've got to still contend with the flesh. We've got to contend with the devil. We've got to contend with this sorry world that is out of course, headed the wrong direction, uh, and headed by the speed of light. Uh, uh, if you can't look around and see the course of events going on in this world and not realize something's about to happen, uh, uh, friend, you're messed up. Uh, but I'm here to tell you the Lord's on the brink of coming and taking this church out of here. Uh, and total anarchy is going to take over this whole sin-cursed world. Uh, there's a conflict. Uh, can I see in this text, I see a champion. Look again in verse number 4. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath. They had a champion. He was their Rambo. He was their big cheese. He was the one they all stood behind and cheered. Have you ever seen those uh, uh, shows where you got uh, two guys contending and then all of a sudden they bring this guy out of the back that's about four times bigger than everybody and everybody starts trembling? That's this guy. Hmm? And he is so impressive that for 40 days the army of Israel stayed up on the mountain and trembled. Hmm? Uh, he was more than the big bad wolf who huffed and puffed and blew houses down. I mean, he was an impressive dude. He was the champion. And can I say, when you look around this world, you, you, you think the world's winning. You think evil's prevailing. But I'm glad, hallelujah, some 2,000 years ago, the champion of champions went to the cross of Calvary uh, and made a way for the souls of man to be saved. Uh, uh, can I say, if God be for you, who can be against you? Can I say, Jesus has never lost a battle? Can I say Jesus has never even been challenged? Can I say that when Jesus shows up, the devil quakes and fears and looks for a place to hide? We see there was a champion. There was a conflict. But then we find a challenge. In verses 8 through 10, the sorry no good giant began to challenge Israel to send him a man. He said, the army's too afraid to show up. Just send me one man. He said, if he defeats me and kills me, our people will serve you. But if I defeat him and kill him, you'll become our servants. There's a challenge. There's a dare. Huh? I remember when I was a boy, out on the playground at school, somebody dared you. And all the other boys are watching. And Seth, you could have been a coward. And say, nah, I'm not going to do that. But I always learn, if you're going to get in it, throw the first punch. Oh, so if they dare, just, just let them have it. You know what happens when you bloody a guy's nose? All them around you, they, they, they won't mess with you no more. You become their champion, huh? Can I say he's thrown a challenge out there? Y'all remember Robert Conrad? And he had that commercial where he had a battery on his shoulder and said, knock it off, I dare you, huh? Nobody ever knocked it off. 
Nobody took the challenge. Huh? Can I say, every day we're challenged. We're challenged whether or not we'll live for Christ. The world and the devil's a big bad bully and they'll tell us we can't live for God. They'll tell us we can't pray in schools. They'll tell us we can't read our Bible on the job. Uh, they'll tell us we can't hand out tracts and we can't witness uh, and we can't even worship unless we get their approval. Hogwash. Uh, uh, they can huff and puff, uh, uh, but I've got good news. My father owns a cattle on a thousand hills and he owns this thing. Uh, the earth's his footstool uh, and in Christ we have liberty. Uh, uh, you can read your Bible. You can pray. Uh, you can tell folks about Jesus and you can worship anytime you want to because we belong to the Lord. Can I say there are three hindrances in this chapter in the conflict? Can I say there is a valley? Can I say when you're in a valley... It's hard to fight. When your spirit's low, it's hard to look up. When you feel beat down and feel like you can't find strength to take your next step, you sure don't want to pour out, pull out a sword and go to battle. Can I say, in my experience in traveling and preaching, in my experience dealing with folks here in our church, there's a lot of folks in the valley. Now, your valley may be different from somebody else's valley, but there's a lot of folks dealing with a lot of things. And can I say, when you get so preoccupied with your valley, you don't see that victory's just ahead. We find that there's a valley. Can I say that there's also another problem in this conflict in the text? Uh, there's the vision of the champion. This sucker's over nine feet tall. Now, if I understand uh, uh, a little bit about the human race and that sort of thing, the average man in that day was about five and a half feet tall. He's almost twice as tall as anybody that is there. Now, Saul, the king of Israel, stood head and shoulders above everybody in Israel, but he was no match for Goliath. Can I say, when you're in a valley, your enemy looks even bigger than he is. Mm. Uh, we got the vision or the sight of the enemy. We're in a valley, but notice the next conflict, part of this conflict, was the voice of the enemy. Can I say, if you're saved, you know there's a devil. But when the devil starts whispering threats in your ear, he becomes more real. It's one thing if I know there's a devil out there, Miss Mary, and he's just dealing with folks out there, but it's another thing when I'm trying to go to sleep at night and he's telling me, you're not going to prevail. Everything you do is in vain. When he starts telling you that he's going to take you out, there's a conflict. They're in a valley. They get sight of this great enemy, and then they got to listen to this great enemy. Israel's in a mess. But I'm not going to preach on any of that. I'm interested in verse number one. Hang in there, Phil. I'll get there. Just hang in there, huh? I'm interested in verse number one. This is the verse I'm interested in. Verse number one says, Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together in Shoko, which belonged to Judah, which pitched between uh, Shoko and Azekah in Ephes Damon. That's the, that's the verse. Okay, ready to go home? The message is in there. You see it? It's there. You got the message yet? I'm interested in this verse. I'm interested in the three places mentioned in this verse. We find that there's Shoko, which belongeth to Judah. And then there's Azekah and Ephes Damon. Can I say that the name Shoko means defense? And can I say that on that day, Israel was on the defense? Can I say that too many people are on the defense? when we need to be on the offense. 
The Bible says that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. A gate is a defensive mechanism. It is not an offensive mechanism. Can I say that hell enlarges itself every day? Uh, and I say, why? Uh, uh, because the church is on the defense. Uh, we need to go on the offense. Uh, all that hell has is a gate. Uh, uh, give me some folks filled with the Holy Ghost uh, that's willing to charge the gates of hell uh, and tell folks they're in the clutches of Satan. Uh, they can be saved. Uh, they can be redeemed. Uh, they don't have to die and go to hell. Uh, it's about time hell starts quivering because uh, the church of God becomes alive uh, and the church of God is revived uh, and God's in his house again uh, and there's the shadow of a king in Israel again uh, it's about time the church does something uh, but we find they're on the defense it seems like more and more places I'm invited to go the churches are anemic they're on the defense you think getting this close to the Son of God coming, we'd be so energized, uh, we'd be ready to go out in a blaze of glory, uh, but so many people are in the valley on the defense. I see not only Shoko, I see Azica. Azica means strength of walls. Can I say Israel saw the enemy in Azica? as stronger than them. Can I say too many Christians are giving the devil too much credit? Again, I say, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Why do you see the devil so strong? Uh, don't you see how strong Christ is? Uh, don't you see that God owns it all? Uh, don't you see that God's omnipotent? He has all power. Uh, uh, why do we give the devil so much credit? And can I say most of the time when you say the devil made you do it? No, he didn't. You did it. You let your sorry, no good, rotten flesh have its way had nothing to do with the devil. I'll go on the record this, saying this, Brother Ron, very few of us ever get the devil's attention. He don't, he's not afraid of us. We're so weak and so anemic and so afraid. Uh, he's got us right where he wants us. What the devil's worried about is revival breaking out and folks getting saved. Mm, he's not worried about us. I would to God we'd get so much God on us, he would take note of us. Well, you see, Azica means strength of all. Shoka means defense. Israel's on the defense. They see the enemy stronger than they. But then I'm interested in Ephes Damon. Ephes Damon means the outpouring of blood. And in that valley, there was going to be bloodshed. There was shedding of blood. I want to preach on this little thought out of Ephes Damon. I'm going to preach on Jesus shed his blood for me. Hmm. Uh, uh, when I was in the valley of valleys, lost in despair, lost without hope, on my way to hell, uh, I'm glad the preacher stood and preached the word of God. Uh, and I realized Jesus shed his blood for me. Uh, hey, uh, when there was no hope, uh, when the enemy was stronger than me, uh, when I had no light, uh, when I had no uh, oh, cause to rejoice or live, uh, I found there was one uh, who died for me uh, and shed his blood uh, that I might have life uh, and that I might have it more abundantly, uh, that I could live, uh, that I could to have a hope, uh, uh, the hope of glory, hallelujah. Uh, what a blessing that Jesus shed his blood for me. Uh, can I say that Jesus' blood, his blood was the creator's blood. The Bible says in Romans 8, 3, for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, uh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh uh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Uh, Colossians 1, 13 says, who had delivered us from the power of darkness, I say hallelujah, uh, and translated us unto, into the kingdom of his dear son, hallelujah, in whom we have redemption, uh, 
through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. Uh, I've got good news. Uh, Jesus did not have earthly blood. Uh, if he had earthly blood, it would have been tainted blood. Uh, and it wouldn't have benefited us at all. Uh, but hey, uh, his blood was a redeeming blood. Uh, hey, he came from glory. Uh, hey, uh, the blood he shed was the Father's blood. Uh, hey, it was righteous, uh, redeeming. Uh, and it made a way that sinners could be saved. Uh, his blood was the Creator's blood. If it wasn't, we're all in trouble. Can I say something else? His blood was cleansing blood. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 22, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. Uh, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. Uh, 1 John 1, 7, but if we walk in the light as he's in the light, uh, we have fellowship one with another, uh, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, uh, cleanses us from all sin. Uh, Revelation 1, 5, and from Jesus Christ, uh, who is the faithful witness uh, and the first begotten of the dead uh, and uh, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us uh, and washed us from our sins uh, in his own blood. Uh, Isaiah said, though your sins be as scarlet, uh, they shall be white as wool. Uh, hey, I got news for you. Uh, uh, we was lost in sin. Uh, our sin uh, is what hindered us from having a relationship with God uh, when Adam and Eve chose to sin. Uh, sin was passed upon all men uh, and death by sin uh, for all had sin. Uh, there was none righteous, no, not one. Uh, hey, we come out of the womb sinners. Uh, we like sin. We live for sin. Uh, sin was what was going to take us to hell. Uh, hey, but a happy day when I realized uh, I didn't have to go to hell. Uh, that Jesus, the Son of God, uh, went to the cross of Calvary uh, and shed his blood for my sin. Uh, he became the propitiation for my sin. Uh, uh, the mercy seat. Uh, and Brother Jim, uh, uh, that third Saturday night of March in 1974 uh, when I called on Jesus uh, and put my faith in the finished works of Calvary uh, that night. Hallelujah, Brother Ray. Uh, he took my filthy, vile sin uh, my past sins, uh, my present sin, uh, and even all my future sins, uh, and he washed them uh, in his blood, uh, and I've been forgiven, uh, I've been cleansed, uh, I've got a pardon from Almighty God, uh, I'm not going to die and go to hell, because uh, my sins have been washed away, uh, hey, uh, John said, Behold the Lamb of God, uh, which taketh away the sins of the world. Uh, my sins are gone. Hallelujah. They, they've been washed uh, in the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, I've got good news. He not only washed my sins, he'll wash your sins. But you've got to repent and ask him to. Been saved 48 years and never been sorry for a minute of it. Uh, oh, I've been sorry sometimes. <laughs> But even when I'm sorry, Miss Melissa, his blood still cleanses me from all sin. And God looks at me, Brother James, when he looks at you, uh, he don't see our vileness. Uh, he don't see our failures. Uh, he don't see our faults. Uh, he sees himself. Uh, and I say hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Uh, I'm glad his blood was shed for me. Can I say God said in the Word of God, he's no respecter of persons. For God so loved the world. That means he did it on purpose. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, that means anybody, whosoever uh, who come uh, I, I, I should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, you can be saved today from your sin. It was cleansing blood. It was the creator's blood. I've got good news. It was conquering blood. I don't have to worry about no giant. I don't have to worry about the devil. I don't have to worry about all the imps of hell. Uh, or oh, they may mess with me. Uh, they may try and trouble me. Uh, they may try to take me out. Uh, but I'm glad I'm in the Father's hand. Uh, I, I, and no man can get to me because I'm in the Father's hand. Uh, and if the Father lets the devil get to me, uh, it's for my good and God's glory. But I'm glad it was conquering blood. Uh, Hebrews 9.13 says, For the blood of bulls and goats and ashes of a heifer, uh, sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, uh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, uh, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, 
purge your conscience from dead works uh, to serve the living God. Uh, I, all I can say is I once was uh, blind, but now I see. Uh, I once was lost, but now I've been saved. I've been found. Uh, hey, uh, I was dead to God. Uh, I was in enmity with God. Uh, I had no right to the things of God. Uh, but hey, the blood of Jesus Christ conquered everything I was uh, and made me a joint heir to everything he has. It's conquering blood. Every excuse you can offer to God why he can't save you is conquered through the blood of Christ. Uh, can I say this? It's not only conquering blood, it's communing blood. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes were afar off are made nigh, by the blood of Christ. Can I say, we weren't uh, anywhere near God. We didn't retain God in our, even our knowledge. We didn't know about God, didn't know how to get to God. Uh, uh, some of us raised in church heard about Jesus, uh, but we didn't know Him. We were far from Him. Uh, 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 I've even got better news uh, about that, Miss uh, uh, Noreen. We were Gentile dogs, had no right to God. Uh, hey, Israel was his chosen people, not us. Uh, 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 Abraham received the promise, uh, not a bunch of Gentiles, uh, but through the blood of Christ uh, and through the works of Calvary, uh, uh, the true vine of Israel got an addition. Uh, God grafted in a branch, uh, and that branch is the church. Uh, made a way where old Gentiles Gentile dogs uh, had no hope. Uh, we're far from God uh, when we called on the Lord uh, and gave him our heart and life. Uh, hey, he not only washed us from our sins, uh, but he drew us from being out there uh, and brought us nigh to him. Uh, where now we have a relationship with the Creator. Uh, now I can commune with him. Uh, the old songwriter said he walks with me uh, and talks with me uh, and tells me I'm one of his own. Uh, hey, I bless the name of the Lord. Uh, I talked with him this morning. Uh, I've been walking with him for a long time. Uh, hey, I have no right to him. Uh, but hallelujah, I'm right in the middle where he wants me to be. Uh, and I can have a relationship with the one that formed me in the womb. Through his blood, I have communion with Almighty God. Uh, what a blessing. There was a wall of sin keeping me from God. But, but the blood of Christ broke down that partition and drew us into the heart of God. What a blessing. It's communing blood. Can I say this? It's comforting blood. I'm only talking about the blood Jesus shed for me. Uh, can I say... In Colossians 1.20, the Bible says, And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say whether they be things in the earth or things in heaven. Listen, this world does everything it can to find peace and contentment. They'll find it in fishing boats. They'll find it in race cars. They'll find it in balls. Oval shape, brown shape of all sizes. They try to find it in hunting. They try to find it in playing video games. All these things have been designed to get your mind off the fact that one day you're going to stand before a holy God. You're going to give him an account of your life. And people... Uh, are constantly having to pop pills to go to sleep, pop pills to wake up, pop, pop pills to make their bodies look the way they want them to look. Uh, 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 they spend money on gym uh, memberships, uh, try to get fit because they're not satisfied with the way they look. Uh, 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 they try to eat right. Uh, and what in the world's up with all the vegan stuff? Uh, hey, we're Americans. Uh, God blessed us to eat meat, hallelujah, and lots of it, hallelujah. Hey, pork chicken, beef, you name it, we ought to eat it. Say, well, Brother Doug, that's not good for you. I'm going to heaven anyway. Leave me alone. I'm enjoying the trip. Hallelujah. Hey, and what is it when everything is green now? Hey, green's only good at Christmas time. 
Hey, what is it? Green's only good if you got a little in your wallet. Are you listening? To, uh, this was made from green, and this is green, and this is eco-friendly. Don't you know uh, this earth's going to melt with a fervent heat? Uh, I'm not looking to save the earth. Uh, I'm looking to try and help folks get saved. Uh, hey, uh, but I've got news for you, friend. Uh, you don't have to die and go to hell because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, and only his blood will bring peace and contentment to your soul. I can go to bed tonight, lay my head down, go to sleep. Don't have to worry about dying in my sleep. Because I know in whom I believed in. And I'm persuaded he's able to keep that against that day. What a blessing. He's promised eternal life to me. Uh, some of you, you're just troubled. You know what you need? You need to be washed in the blood of Christ. It brings peace to your soul. Uh, it's amazing how your soul was seeking and you looked in every avenue until you met the Lord. Then you didn't have to look for any more because you found what you was looking for. His name is Jesus. Uh, some look in needles and some look in bottles and some look in events. And all. None of that will bring peace. matter of fact, all that brings more hardship. I tell you the one who brings peace his name is Jesus and I say it's a comforting blood huh let me just throw this in while I'm there I do all the drugs I want to do I do all the booze I want to do I do all the carousing around I want to do I just don't want to do those things so why the Bible says if any man be in Christ he's a new creature old things are passed away behold all things become new when Jesus washed me Jesus indwelled me he took up his abode through the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit lives in me right. and the Holy Spirit's the one that tells me how to live through the word of God and can I say those things I used to like to do I don't like to do them anymore because the Lord lives in me and those things I used to crave I don't crave anymore because the Lord lives in me he changed my want to's now what I crave is Him. Now what I crave is being around His people. Now what I crave is music that glorifies Him. Now what I crave is reading material that helps my mind be on Him. Hey, He changed my want-tos. The reason the things of God don't work for you, you might not know Him. Hmm. Can I say? It's comforting blood. But can I say this? It's a covenant blood. I don't have time to get into all the Old Testament survey and everything. You realize there are eight dispensations in the Bible. God made a covenant with Noah. And he placed a rainbow in the sky as a testimony. God made a covenant with Abraham. God made a covenant with Moses. God has made covenants with man. He made a covenant with Adam. Can I say, God made a covenant with us through the blood of Jesus Christ. In Hebrews chapter number 13, verse number 20, the Bible says, Now the God of peace, I told you, God gives you peace, that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do His will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in His sight, through Jesus Christ, to Him be glory forever and ever. Amen. You see, there's an everlasting covenant through the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible says that Jesus was the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Before God ever made the worlds and the galaxies, for God ever made man and formed him out of the dust of the earth, uh, made him in his own image and breathed into man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Before any of that ever transpired, God knew that man would sin and that man would need a Savior. And so God the Father, God the Son, made a covenant in eternity past uh, that Jesus would die and shed His blood for our sin, and that blood would be an everlasting covenant that anybody that is washed in that blood will be saved from their sins. It's an everlasting covenant. Can I say... When John saw Jesus on the Isle of Patmos, when the Lord called him up into third heaven and let him see all the things in the future, uh, uh, John was afraid when he saw the Lord uh, uh, because he didn't look like that little fellow you got in your picture hanging in your, in your home. huh? 
he saw him, he says, his eyes were as flames of fire, his countenance was as brass, his hair was white as wool, his voice was as many thunderings, uh, and he fell before him as a dead man. Uh, uh, and the Lord said, uh, I'm he that was dead, uh, and I'm alive forevermore, uh, and have the keys to death and hell. Uh, you say, what does all that mean? Uh, what that means is, uh, my dear friends, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, uh, as long as the high priest was alive, uh, hey, you had refuge uh, in the city of refuge. Uh, and I've got good news. Uh, Jesus shed his blood. Uh, he laid down his life and he died. Uh, and three days later, he rose again under his own power, uh, conquering death, hell, and the grave, uh, being able to atone for sinners. Uh, and his blood is an everlasting covenant uh, on the mercy seat before the throne of God. Uh, he said, I'm alive forevermore. Uh, and there's a covenant. Uh, my blood will save you for all of eternity because I'm never going to die again. There's refuge in his blood. And that covenant was made between God the Father and God the Son. And God's never lost a one that's came to him because of the everlasting covenant of the blood of Christ. Can I say this though? The blood he shed for me is a contractual blood. You see, when he washes your sin, you enter into a contract with God. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21, this is God's part in the contract. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He said Jesus Christ, the Holy Lamb of God, knew no sin. But he was robed in likeness of flesh and came this world uh, and the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all and he became all of our sins so he could atone for our sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him and were robed in his righteousness. That was God's part. God said, I'll provide the Redeemer in my son and he who's holy will become vile so that you who is vile will one day become holy. That was God's part. That's a pretty good deal right there. God says, I'll take all your sin, and one day I'll give you a body like mine and a mind like mine, and you'll be like me forevermore. Pretty good deal. We don't have to go to hell. We can be like God and dwell in the abode of God forevermore. That was his part. But I said, there's a contract. What is our part? When we enter into the contract, we have our sins washed in the blood of Christ. Well, you find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse number 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. What's that price? The blood of Christ. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Here's the contract. God takes away our sin. He gives us a home in heaven and gives us a body like him with fashion like him will be like God it'll be like it was intended to be all along but our part is we're no longer our own you're not saved and then allowed to live and do as you want to you've been bought with a price your freedom from your sin costs Jesus everything so glorify God in your body Everything that you have now belongs to God. And since He saved you, you ought to live for Him. You ought to let others know about Him. Uh, you don't determine when you're going to come to church. He does. And he said, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. So much more as you see the day approaching. Uh, you don't determine how much you give in the offering plate. He does. You don't determine if you're going to serve Him. He does. You don't determine anything. He does. So, oh, well, that, that's a heavy price. No, your sin was the heavy price. And can I say, living for God's not bondage, it's liberty. I've been set free from my sin. And the son, the son has set you free, you're free indeed. Can I say the best life you can ever live is the Christian life? Uh, the Christian life is full of joy unspeakable and full of glory. Uh, uh. I have peace and joy and love and temperance and meekness and goodness and gentleness. All that came from the blood of Christ. All I had to do was be willing to turn from my sin and turn to Him. 
and ask him to save me. I entered into a contract with God. See, a lot of people say, well, I'm saved. I get to go to heaven. That's all that matters. No, that's just the start. Bringing glory to God is what matters, and that happens when our lips and our lives are in tune with him. Got one other thought. I'll be done. I'm glad he shed his blood for me. But this blood that he shed is also a condemning blood. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 29, Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden under the foot of the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant whereat, wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Can I say that in Hebrews chapter number 9, it says, His blood speaketh louder than Abel's blood that speaketh. See, in order for God to save man, it cost God everything. He gave his son. He bankrupt heaven to save us. And if you do not allow the blood of Christ to clean you, cleanse you from your feet, it's like trampling it under your feet. You are thumbing your nose at God. My dear friends, in the ages to come, when you stand at the great white throne judgment, God will remind you of every time you heard the gospel. God will remind you of every time you heard that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all sin and how you rejected it, how you thumbed your nose up. And the very thing that could save you will now condemn you. And you'll be sentenced to the lake of fire forever to pay for your own sins because you wouldn't let the blood of Jesus pay for them in this life. It's just simple. Life is a valley. Most of the time we're on the defense. There are things that look too big or impossible for us. One of them is getting to heaven. You know, all religion will tell you is what you have to do, and if you do it all to the perfection that they tell you to do it, then maybe you've got a chance to go to heaven when you die. But see, religion, all it does is damn you. Religion can't save you. The only one can save you is Jesus. Brother Phil, when he prayed, quoted the verse, Jesus said, I am the, the, what, the truth, the life, and the way. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And can I say, he's the only way to heaven. And the only way to heaven is through his blood. And he shed his blood to save you. You could never do enough good works to go to heaven. If you could have, Jesus wouldn't have had to die. Yep. Friend, I fear some of you are in the clutches of Satan and already headed to hell. The only hope for you today is what I preach unto you is the blood of Jesus Christ. I wouldn't leave this sanctuary unless I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that I was saved, that my sins had been cleansed in the blood of Christ. Say, Brother Doug, I pray all the time. Yeah, but God don't hear your prayers if you regard iniquity in your heart. If you're a sinner, the only prayer God hears is, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. When you're willing in a repentant heart to turn for your sin and turn into the Lord and trust in Him. You're not saved, I get saved today. If you are saved, you ought to thank God for the blood of Christ. Uh, he defeated the king of terrors in our life. The Bible lets us know the king of terrors is death. The Bible also lets us know for a Christian, death has lost its sting. The grave has lost its victory. Paul said to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Uh, isn't it wonderful to know because of the blood of Christ when we take our last breath we wake up in glory. It's all over. I bless the Lord. I thank him for the blood of Christ. I wonder are you saved today? If you're saved is everything right between you and God today? If you're saved and on fire for God you ought to thank God for the blood of Christ when was the last time you thanked him for saving you we're going to have an invitation we're going to give you an opportunity to do business with God if God spoke to your heart in any capacity in this service we invite you to come
You say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. You come. We'll get somebody to take a Bible show you how to be saved. You can be saved, friend. The only qualification to getting saved is you've got to know you're lost. If you know that you've not been washed in the blood of Christ, you ought to come. Let Jesus save you. He wants to save you. He loves you. He'll change your life. You say, how do you know? He changed mine. And he wants to change yours. Folks are already coming. Let's all stand, Brother Clint, and come get a song of invitation. You're not saved today. Why don't you come? Give your life to Jesus. As these folks are praying. They're picking out a song. Let's have a word for our Father. We love you. Thank you for the precious blood of the Lamb. The Lord Jesus Christ who gave his life that we might have life. Lord, thank you for the day you saved me. Lord, I've not always been what I should be, but you've always been more than I could have ever hoped for. Now, Father, I pray you'd bless. Lord, I pray for those that might be here today unsaved. The sweet Holy Ghost of God, convict them of sin, draw them to an altar of repentance. I pray for those that are saved but living far beneath their privileges, that, Lord, they'd come get things made right. I pray for those that, Lord, are seeking you, Lord, that they'd come with a heart of appreciation for the goodness of God. Now, blessing this invitation, speak to hearts, bind the powers of hell, and don't let the fowls of hell steal the seed of the Word of God that's been planted today. And God, do a work. We'll bless you for it, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.